Hello, my fourth grade friends. Today is very exciting. We are starting unit three. So it starts off with a letter. This video, we're only going to get through the first page of uh, unit three, lesson one. And the next video, we'll finish it up with the second page of it. But it's a lot of information, so I think it makes sense to go over it. Uh, not all at once. So uh, I'll start by reading this letter. After we go through the letter, I'd like you to rip out the letter and give it to your parents so your parents um, know what you're doing and how to help you. Remember, this is similar uh, to what your parents have learned, but you're going to learn many strategies when many parents, like when I was a kid, we only did this strategy. So um, some things might be new to them. Please make sure you are being nice parents if they're trying to help you, okay? Or, you know, whatever adult is trying to help you. All right, dear family, your child is familiar with multiplication from earlier units. Unit three of math expressions extends the concepts used in multiplication to teach your child division. The main goals of this unit are to learn methods for dividing whole numbers up to four digits, use estimates to check the reasonableness of answers, solve problems involving division and remainders, your child will learn and practice techniques such as the place value sections, expanded notation, and digit by digit methods to gain speed and accuracy in division. At first, your child will learn to use patterns and multiplication to divide. Later, your child will learn to use the methods with divisors from 2 through 9. Then your child will learn to divide when there's a zero in the quotient or a dividend or dividend and to watch out for potential problems involving these situations. Examples of division methods. So the place value sections method looks a lot like the place value section method we did with multiplication, right? You have your uh, factors on the side and your product um, on the inside and partial products and uh, adding them together, but it's backwards, right? Because division is the inverse operation. Um, here, again, you have, uh, this is almost like the quick array drawings that we've done, uh, but you have your your product on the inside, and then, it, or I guess now in division, it's your dividend, and then your divisors here on the side, and your quotient is up here in partial quotients that then you add together, and then here you do digit by digit, and that one is probably most commonly used um, a lot of the time. This is really important. Your child may use whatever method he or she chooses as long as he or she can explain it. Some children like to use different methods. So the reason we're going through all these different methods is not to overcomplicate things. It's only to give kids many tools uh, so they can pull things out of their toolbox as they would like. Um, it also helps build that conceptual understanding rather than just simply telling everyone to memorize things. Okay, your child will also learn to interpret remainders in the context of pr the problem being solved. For example, when the remainder alone is the answer to a word problem, like how many things would be left over um, after dividing something. Finally, your child will apply this knowledge to solve mixed problems with one or more steps using all four operations. If you have any questions, call me, or if I'm not your teacher, call your teacher or email them. Same letter is here in Spanish. So if your parents speak Spanish, they can read that side. So you can go ahead and rip this out and give it to them and then continue the video once you're done with that. So we're going to start with some vocabulary because um, it's important that we understand the words being used when we're talking about different um, numbers in division problems. So uh, the words we're going to talk about are divisor, quotient, and dividend. Although multiplication and division are inverse operations, each operation has its own language. So in multiplication, the things that got multiplied with each other uh, are the factors, and then the answer to a multiplication problem is the product. In, if you're trying to like do the reverse of it, the product would be inside the little house, and then the factors will be outside on the side and on the top. Uh, here with division, we're going to use the division language. So the dividend is the thing, that, in my mind, I think of it as the number that's getting divided. Right? The dividend, it sounds almost really similar. And then the divisor, the number doing the devising or dividing is this one. And then the quotient is the answer. Now, divisor, it made me think of with the OR at the end. Um, 
like job titles like actor, doctor, you know, I guess that whatever. It's like a job, right? This is the one doing the dividing of a bigger number. So it goes there and then the quotient goes on top. Um, the models for multiplication and division are the same models. You can have arrays with rows and columns. You can just have rows and columns or you can have area. Um, the difference is you usually with division, you'll know what the area is and you're trying to figure out one of the lengths, right? one of the side amounts. You'll know the total number of squares in an array, but you'll only know one of the, um, you'll know the divisor, right? You'll know one of the factors, but not the other one. And you use your knowledge of the dividend and the divisor to find the quotient, or you could say, in other words, you can use your knowledge of the product um, and one of the factors to find the other factor. It sounds complicated, don't worry, you're going to get the hang of it, I promise. So, 12 bottles on a table, like that. 12 divided by 3. If you don't know, you could think 3 times what is 12. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4 is 12. So, if 3 times 4 is 12, then 12 divided evenly by 3 will get you four in each group. Three groups, four in each group. Okay. All right, same thing. Three times what is 12? Four, and then 12 divided by three is four. Right here, the same. Thing, three times what is 12? Well, not three times five, that's 15. It's not three times three, that's nine. Three times four. So 12 divided by three is. So this is four feet. Now you're probably seeing, ooh, I can see why my teacher kept telling me to memorize my math facts. It's gonna be so helpful, don't you think? Okay. Now we're gonna talk about remainders. And a remainder is the number of things that remain, AKA also known as leftovers. So let's take a look at this problem. Sometimes when you divide, some are left over. The leftover amount is called the remainder. If you have 14 juice boxes arranged in groups of three, how many juice boxes will be left over? Well, you'll have groups of three of the 14. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 12. Um, but then there's these two and you would need one more, but you don't have one more. So you don't have five solid groups. You have four groups and there's two left over. And the way that we write this is we have the 14 inside the uh, little house. That's our dividend. Our divisor, the number that we're dividing 14 by, goes on the side. Then we think, okay, what can you multiply to get close but not over 14? Well, three, three is nine. Three times five is 15, so that's too high. So three times four, and that's 12. And you write that underneath the 14, and you subtract. Then you have uh, 3 times 4 is 12, and you find the difference between 14 and 12, which is 2. There are 2 left over, so there's 2 in the remainder, so you say 4 remainder of 2. Then you have to think, okay, compare the divisor and the remainder. The remainder must be less than the divisor. So just if you were to try to write that out, say you were doing 3, 14, say you said 3, and then you did 3 times 3, which is 9, 14 take away 9 is 5. Now if you have 5 left over, could you make another group? Yeah, so if you were just say remainder 5, really, 
you've just lost your opportunity to make one more group. That would be saying like all of these can't be put into a group of three, um, group of three, which is, yeah, I mean, all of these. And you can't put, can't get a group of three out of that? Yeah, you can, there's one right there. So you wanna make sure that your remainder is smaller. If you notice that your remainder is bigger than your divisor, then all you need to do is probably bump it up one. Bump your quotient up one. 12 to remainder two. And then, yeah, that's smaller, so you can't have another full group, so you're done. Okay. Let's go ahead and turn that page over, and we'll do a little bit of practicing. So, it says here, let me take this out. The remainder must be less than the divisor. If it's not, you have to increase the quotient. That's what we just talked about. So here, with this example, 5 times 3 is 15, 23 minus 15 is 8, that's not going to work because 8 is bigger than 5, which means we have to increase this quotient by 1, probably. If we try that out, 5 times 4 is 20, 23 minus 20 is 3, which is fine, right, because 3 is less than 5. So we can't get another full group. There's just only a little bit left over. Here with this example, um, 9 times 8 is 72. The remainder for that would be 15. 15 is bigger than 9, so you need to increase your quotient a little bit more. Let's try 9 times 9. 87 minus 81 is 6. 6 is less than 9, so that is a fine remainder to have because you can't make a full group out of that, of 9, right? Okay, let's give it a shot. So, 2 um, or 19 divided by 2. Well, 20 divided by 2 is 10, but that's too high. Um, let's see. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Let's try, what can you multiply by 2 to get 18? That's pretty close, right? And that's an even number. You can multiply it by 9. 2 times 9 is 18. Then you find the difference between 19 and 18 is just 1. Is 1 a smaller number than 2? Yes, it is. So it is an okay remainder to have. All right. 7. How many 7s can you get in 50? Let's think. You have 7 times 5. It's 35. It's got to be bigger than 5. 7 times 10 is 70, so it's smaller than 10. 7, so, hmm, 7 times 6 is 42. That's pretty close. What about the next one? 7 times 7, that, 49. That's really close, and the difference will just be 1, right? So it's perfect. So that was 7 times 7 with a remainder of one, with one left over. Let's look at number three. 48 divided by nine. Let's think. Nine times one is nine. Nine times two is 18. Nine times three is 27. Nine times four is 36. Nine times five is 45, that's pretty close. Nine times Six is 54, but that's too high, right? So what do we need to pick for this? Nine times five, which is 45. Find the difference. Three, the five remainder three. You can have five groups of nine and you'll have three. Five, how many fives go, goes into 48? 48 divided by 5 is 5 times what is close to 48? Well, 5 times 10 is 50. We want something probably a little bit less than 10. Let's try 5 times 9. 5 times 9 we just talked about is 45. So that's perfect. The 9 remainder 3. 
All right, number five. Six. How many sixes go into 19? Or 19 divided by six is one. Well, six times one, six. Six times two is 12. Six times three is 18. That's very close. That's looking good. Six times four is 24, which is too high. So it has to be six times three, which is what? 18, find the difference, one, remainder one. We're looking at our remainder one is smaller than six, so that is fine. Okay, three into 25, 25 divided by three. Okay, I'm gonna skip ahead to three times five, that's 15, I don't need to do all those ones below that. Three times six, 18. Three times seven, 21. Ooh, that's close. That could be it. Three times eight. Three times eight, 24, right? Three times nine is 27. That's too far. So three times eight has to be it. 24. Okay, eight remainder one. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and practice dividing and then finding the remainders. If you're feeling up to it, I'd like you to try a couple. So pause the video, try a couple, and then correct them with me. If you wanna stay with me, you're welcome to do so, but try to be brave on at least a couple of them and give them a shot. I know you can do it, you know? Maybe you won't get them all 100% right this time, but you will eventually. Okay, so six into 27. 27 divided by six. So six times five is 30, so it's probably a little bit less than that. Six times four is 24. And then it's three, so remainder three. And three is less than six, so that should be fine. 30 divided by four. Well, eight times four is 32, right? So that means we need less than eight, so what about seven? Four times seven is 28, which is perfect. Then we'll only have a remainder of two. This one they did for us is seven times five is 35, so remainder of four, nice. And then they're checking it over here. So we'll check it over here for 12 and 15. All right, eight goes into 43 how many times? Well, I know that eight goes into 40 five times, right? And that would leave a remainder of three, which would be less than eight, so that's perfect. So five times eight is 40, remainder of three. You're feeling up for it, go, go for these on your own. Five goes into 26 how many times? 15, 20, 25, 30. 30 is too many. 25 is just enough and we'll have one left over. Okay. 41 divided by nine. And this one we're gonna check over here. So 41 divided by nine. Let's see. Nine times one is nine. Nine times two is 18. Nine times three is 27. Nine times four. Four is 36, that's pretty close. Nine times five is 45, that's too high, right? It's higher than 41. So we'll have to say four, which is 36. And then five is the remainder. So then over here, we'll do nine times four equals 36. And 36, adding that remainder, does that get us 41? You're darn tootin' it does. There's that 41 right there. Okay. Number 13, here we go. Uh, five goes into 32 how many times? Well, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. That's six fives for 30. 32 is not five more than that. That'll be seven fives and 35. So we'll say six, which will get us 30. And then we'll subtract and we'll have two left over. So six remainder two. All right. 21 divided by four. 
four fives is 20. So five fours is 20. That sounds perfect. Five times four is 20. Find the difference. It's one. You have one left over. Last one. If you haven't done one on your own, give this one a shot. You can do it. You can do it. Three times what is 22? Three times five is 15. Three times six is 18. Three times seven is 21. Three times eight is 24. That's too high. So you have to go three times seven, 21. Difference is one, one left over. Now we're gonna do the checking. Three times seven equals 21. 21 plus remainder equals 22. All right, now I know that there's more of this that we're gonna work on tomorrow, but I think this is a good place to pause. Um, practice your math facts. That's the second part of today's math. Practice your math facts. And I'll catch you next time, all right? Bye, everybody.